He is risen. Oh, y'all sound nice. That's great. Happy Easter, everybody. Um, my name is Adam, and I'm one of the pastors here, and I am so glad to see all of you today. You're looking so nice. There was a, one, of our, one of our staff members. He shall remain nameless. I, I, was, uh, I saw his wife and children come in this morning, and I was like, hey, your husband looks great. And she goes, yeah, anything can rise from the dead. Uh, <laughs> so I will, I will leave it to you uh, to decide who that was. Um, uh, but uh, that I thought, right, now I have my opening story. So there it is. <laughs> Um, so whether you feel like you, uh, you have risen or like you're still in need of a resurrection, we're really glad that you're here today. Um, we are going to be in the Gospel of Mark. If you have a Bible, I would love for you to turn to chapter 16. And in the book of Romans, we're going to turn to chapter 8. Uh, I'm going to read from Mark 16, the account that Mark has of the resurrection of Jesus. And then Romans 8, when the Apostle Paul takes this story and applies it to the life of the church in Rome. And through God's word, his holy, inerrant, authoritative word, he is going to speak to us today. Mark 16. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb and they were saying to one another, who will roll the stone away from, for us at the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe. They were alarmed. And he said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him, but go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Mm. Romans chapter 8, verses 11, or 10 and 11 say this. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin... The Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit who raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. This is the word of the Lord. Lord, thank you for this word. Thank you for our time together. Holy Spirit, would you speak to us, help us today to see the truthfulness of the story of the resurrection. And not just to see it, God, but to, to live in light of it, God. I, it's so easy to just kind of show up on Easter and sit there and spectate and then go and have lunch or whatever it is that is our habit. But Lord, days like today, they, they puncture our regular rhythms with the truthfulness of the gospel story. So I'm asking that you would do that today and that we would go from having an interesting lecture about you to an encounter with you. Do that with us, God. We, we don't want to leave until you have shown up, Holy Spirit. So come and move in our midst and in our hearts, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You can probably tell from the graphics that you see everywhere that the, the big idea or the theme of uh, our sermon today is that everything can change. Now, if you look at that and you kind of divorce the idea from the, the gospel of Christ, it, it sounds like something that you might even see on, on like a self-help section of the bookstore, right? Because we in the United States, like we're really into doing whatever we can to, to change. Like however we need to lose five pounds or gain five pounds or grow our hair back or uh, that one's for me. Or uh, the Bible says if a man is bald, he is clean. And so that is my, I have it tattooed right now. It's just, um, but whatever it is that we don't like about ourselves, we, more than any other culture on the planet, will spend money and time trying to improve that part of ourselves. I have mentioned this before, but I'll say it again. We in America spend more money in, on the self-help industry than the poorest 86 nations in the world have as their gross domestic product. That's a lot of money. Now, you'd think for all of that investment, we would be living our best lives, and we aren't. 
I don't know if you ever watch the news or just, you know, operate your phone or look outside, but it doesn't seem to be the case that our lives are marked by this constant up and to the right move. We, we really want things to change. We, we really want to do whatever we can to, to live well. We really want to seem to be the kind of people who want to invest in our health and our wealth, in our education, in having a good family. Whatever it is that we can imagine is the happiness we perceive in life. We do about whatever we can to go and get it. But can I, can I give you some bad news on Easter Sunday? Like even those of you that like go to CrossFit nine times a week, and you pretend that you like kale even though everyone knows you don't because no one does and you eat organic and you get get all the botox you do whatever you're gonna die now you're really quiet like that's a surprise to you like no i really thought that if i just hit this next set (laughs) i you do 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 you've achieved immortality that's not how it works that's not how it works man like, we can, we can live really well, and we can, ex- and like, all that stuff is fine. The Bible says that, you know, bodily discipline is of some gain. But eventually, you're going to die. I- eventually, the grave will win your battle against it, because all of us will experience, at some point, the power of death over us. And so... It, if this is it, if, if all we're doing is coming together and, and we're sort of reminding ourselves of a, of a, you know, a Christian-sounding fairy tale or a myth, then all we're really doing, at best, at best, is to put some window dressing and decorate death. But if Christ is raised... If there really is a man who is also God, who defeated death, who died and then rose again, if that's true, then so is this. And because that is true, everything can change. Because if death can be rolled backwards, if God can overcome our sin, our rebellion, our fear, our hatred, our war, our crime, our poverty, our disease, and all the other stuff that makes this life really, really unenjoyable, if Jesus Christ, through his suffering on the cross and his victorious resurrection, can overcome those things, then there's not anything in your life that he cannot overcome too. Everything can change. Some of you, that's all you needed. That's all you needed today. Just someone to tell you hey, it is not always going to be this way. Some of you, you're, like you are barely making it here. Maybe you, you were invited here on the promise of someone will buy you lunch afterwards or you got one of our cards in the mail or someone knocked on your door. Whatever it is that got you here, I want you to know that because Jesus is alive, everything can change. We have no excuse for a lack of hope because Jesus is raised. But how do, how do we get this event of history, this resurrection thing to turn into a present reality. Here's how it works. I think everything can change only when Jesus' resurrection moves from Sunday story to spiritual reality. So today we're going to talk about how in the world do we make it from the Easter story being this like thing that we did in Sunday school where we put the, you know, bunny on the felt board or whatever. How do, we, how do we get from this Sunday story to a spiritual reality in which we are walking in resurrection life and experiencing the power of the resurrection now, looking forward to the resurrection to come? How do we do that? That's what we're going to talk about today. The first way that we have to understand uh, how to do that is by understanding the Sunday story itself. By understanding that this, this story right here, this is not like superfluous, like an additional little appendix to the story of the Bible. This event, the cross and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, these are the apex events. This Jesus event is what everything prior to that in your Bible points to, and everything after that point in your Bible refers back to. The entirety of Scripture, the entirety of the story of God, the entirety of the mission of God, and the entirety of history turn on this event. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. This is the greatest story ever told, that God became man in Jesus Christ, that he lived perfectly, that he demonstrated what humanity was supposed to be like, that he taught us the words of God and the ways of God, that he lived empowered by the Spirit of God, and he brought to us the kingdom of God, and for that, we murdered him. 
But praise God, he did not stay in the ground because death had no hold over him because the death he died was not his death. It was in our place for our sin. So his perfect life could conquer death. And now because he has risen, if we trust him, we will rise too. That's the story. That's the story. And and it's it's not a fairy tale. It's not a fairy tale. If we had more time together, I would love to go and tell you all the historical evidences for the resurrection of Jesus, but you just really have to Google them. Some of you might say, well, yeah, I mean, it's a story, but like, you know, it's like a fish tale, right? Like, you went and caught a fish that was this big, and you told your buddy, and when your buddy told the story, it was this big, and when his dad heard him, it was this big, and by, you know, you do that for a thousand years, and Jesus is risen, right? The only problem with that is everything about history. You say, well, how can we really know? Like, didn't they just make this sort of thing up? No, the story of the resurrection wasn't cooked up in the third century or the fourth century in a room filled, you know, under, under the catacombs of Rome, trying to, people, popes with big hats consolidating their power. I'm afraid no such room and no such thing ever happened. No, we've got ample historical evidence that attests to the resurrection of Jesus. In fact, we've got more documentary evidence, ancient documentary evidence, about the resurrection of Jesus actually happening than we have about the existence of Julius Caesar or the words of Plato and Aristotle. We have over 5,000 extant manuscripts from within 150 years of these events that we have now. 30,000 ancient manuscripts in total. Do you know how many copies of Caesar's Annals, his biography, we have? Ten. 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 Ten copies of the document that tells us about the late Roman Empire. If we're going to be honest about the way we do history, we've got to take this story really seriously. We've got to take this story really seriously because this is a story that actually happened. And the reason that's really important is, look, if it's just a fairy tale, it has no claim on you. But if it's true that Jesus Christ is who he said he claimed to be and got up out of the grave, you have to deal with that. There's no neutral on that. He can't any longer be just like a nice teacher. He can't any longer just be like an interesting figurehead of a religion. He has to either be accepted and obeyed and followed by you or rejected by you. But there's no middle ground. This is a story that happened. And only when this story that happened moves from Sunday story to spiritual reality will we begin to walk in this powerful ability to change. So when Paul wrote about this event, reflecting on it, here's what he did. He said this, if Christ is in you, Though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. You see, Paul understood that the connection, the connective tissue between the resurrection of Jesus that Sunday morning and your life right now is the Holy Spirit. And here's the kicker. The Holy Spirit in you is the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. You say, well, he was Jesus. Yeah, yeah, but you're not listening. The same Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, that caused his dead heart to beat and his blood begin to flow again, the same blood that saves you from your sins and his body to rise up again, the same body that was broken for your sins and oxygen to enter his lungs, the same lungs that taught you about the words of God and exhaled their last when he said, it is finished. That same Holy Spirit that did that to the body of the Son of God can do that in your life now. That's what he's saying. And that's crazy if it's true. If it's true that the same spirit, the same powerful presence of God that raised Christ from the dead now dwells in the church, then my friends, everything can change. Everything can change. Everything about your situation, everything about your emotions, everything about about how you're approaching your future, everything about your, everything can change. That's not saying everything will change, but if Jesus can roll death backwards, I feel like depression's just sort of a lesser miracle. If Jesus can get up out of the grave, I feel like, I feel like he's going to meet your needs. You know? How do we move this from Sunday story to spiritual reality? The connective tissue is the Holy Spirit. So he says, if Christ is in you, well, how in the world does Christ get in? That doesn't make any sense. It only makes sense if it's by the Holy Spirit. See, here's what's crazy. At Pentecost, that event after the resurrection of Jesus, after the ascension of Jesus, the Holy Spirit was poured out into the church. And this church, this group of like 11 cowards, one of whom was a terrorist and the other killed himself. This is not a winner's circle, all right? This group of people 
got turned into the most courageous apostles that we could ever imagine. How does that happen? It doesn't happen for a myth. You won't die for something you know is false. You just won't. So like someone who's really nuts will, maybe, but not 11 of you. The same Holy Spirit was poured out into the church and this movement began to explode and grow in the face of fierce opposition. If Christ is in you, what he's saying, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. This is so cool. He's saying, look, your body, dead. So all, the, all of the vitamins, all of the nutrients, all of the CrossFit, all of that, all of the, all of the kale, all the stuff I already talked about, all of that, you're still going to die. But here's the good news. Even though that's true, even though death will eventually have your body, the spirit is life because of righteousness, not your righteousness. Thank God. And not mine. Because of the righteousness of Jesus, life can flow into you. The spirit is life because of righteousness. What does that mean? That means you can experience resurrection life now, even though your body die. That means even though eventually you are moseying to the grave, your inner man, your inner woman is getting holier, is getting stronger. It's getting filled with more life, more peace, more joy. You know the crazy thing about Jesus? When he walked up to sad people, sick people, dying people, the law told him he was to stay away from them because their death would like defile someone. But Jesus was so filled with life, the life of God, the life of the Spirit, that when he walked up to the dead, when he walked up to the sick, when he walked up to the dying, his life was imparted to them. Why? You say, well, because he's Jesus. No, that's not what the Bible says. Because the same Spirit that dwelled in him now dwells in, because the Holy Spirit was so powerfully alive in Jesus that his body was filled with the life of God. I think it's very good news that Christianity is not religious cognitive behavioral therapy. CBT is great. Try it if you need it. But we're talking about power. We're talking about resurrection power, whereby the life of God, the joy of God, the peace of God, and the goodness of God can come flooding into the human soul if we ask, if we trust. If Christ is in you, that happens when you turn from your sin and you trust Jesus. You say, Jesus, I want to pledge my allegiance to you. I want to ask you, be my Lord, be my Savior, be my treasure, be my master, be my friend. I want to follow you with my whole life. And when that happens, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in you. Christ himself, by his Spirit, comes to dwell in you. And Paul is saying, if Christ is in you, then all the bo- although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. That is some good news. And then, as if it couldn't get any better, he says this. If the spirit who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So here's what he says. He says, look, although the body is dead because, look, you're dying, but good news, the spirit can bring you life and joy and emotional vitality and, and peace in your inner man, your inner woman. That's, that's good. All, even beyond that, the spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. That means if you trust in him, you will rise, be given a body like his. You will be alive in his presence. You will live with him in his presence forever. But guys, I'm not talking about like sort of a dream state, kind of zen, becoming one with him. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your physical body being made alive again to live and breathe and move in a renewed physical world that is no longer characterized by death, decay, and disease, where God is so present with you, you don't need light anymore, and the next 10,000 forevers are constantly better than the ones before them because of the one for whom you are living again. That's what I'm talking about. Paul is saying the same spirit, the resurrection power of Christ, can do this in you and in me. Therefore, if we accept Christ as our king and we turn away from everything the Bible calls sin, then the spirit who is life moves in. And when the spirit moves in, then death is no longer our final story. Resurrection life, everything can change as Jesus' resurrection moves from this Sunday story into spiritual reality. And I have great news for you. It can. It can. We don't have enough time for me to share with you the stories of how God, in the power of a spirit, has changed my life, has moved in my family, has moved in this church. But stick around. Stick around. 
You'll hear those stories. We hear those stories because we read your connection cards when we pray for you. You'll hear the stories after stories of the Holy Spirit working miracles in the life of God's people. I'm telling you, if this is true, and it is, then everything can change. And here's the deal. Your attempts at self-change and self-improvement, they just aren't enough. I don't care how disciplined you are. I don't care how stoic you feel. I don't care how well you do the things of this life. Eventually, you won't be able to do them anymore. But there is life beyond the grave. There is life that can be imparted to you through the same Spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead. Because He is raised, everything can change for you and you can live with Him and for Him again. The real question is, do you actually want to? Do you actually want to? Because if, if the resurrection is going to move from Sunday story into spiritual reality, that, that means things for you. That, that means that you're going to have to pledge allegiance to Jesus. That means that you're going to have to turn and trust the Savior. That means that some life change is going to happen. Maybe some of you in this room, though, you're, you've hit enough of life's difficult spots to go, you know, I've been trying to do this on my own, and it doesn't work very well. And for those of you that are very young and haven't yet, you will. I'm telling you, if you come to Jesus, the resurrection power of Christ can move in and everything can change.